Hello. Today I want to talk about the solution of stochastic differential equations and Ito's lemma. I know, and this is also my own experience with Ito's lemma, that for uh, many people it's kind of a hurdle that when they see it they think, oh, now it's getting complicated, I'm going to switch off. And I think there's much more to this lemma and also a lot of economic intuition. And uh, this is what I want to stress in this video, the economic intuition behind Ito's lemma. And I hope I'm going to succeed. Um, let me first explain in a couple of words what I think uh, Ito's lemma is about. Well, assume that you have 100 euros and assume that you lose 10% and then gain 10%. Uh, well, then you from 100, you get down to 90 and then back up, but not to 100, but to only 99. So you've lost the euro. If you first gain 10% and then lose 10%, then you go up to 110 and then down to 99. So you also lose a euro. And that's, of course, due to the compound interest effect. So it means that if these percentages that you lose and gain, if they wiggle, up and down, this means that on average you're going to lose some money. So this up and down, that's called the volatility, and this means the volatility has to be taken into account in the compound interest, and this is exactly what Ito's um, lemma is doing. So one could say Ito's lemma is just a compound interest, the uh, taking into account compound interest in a continuous time version of um, of this this effect. Okay, okay. Um, but what I think we should do is, because we're talking about uh, stochastic differential equations, let's first start with an ordinary um, differential equation. Let's solve an ordinary differential equation. And I think that's something that most of you have already done. And then see where the um, parallels between stochastic differential equations and ordinary differential equations are. Um, okay. So here comes an ordinary differential equation. Uh, Let's consider a function f and the increment in f in each point in time is equal to beta, some factor, times the function itself, times the increment in time. Okay, this is um, something that you probably have already seen and um, we already know that the exponential function is a solution to this. Um, so let's make an educated guess. Let's guess that the function f is in fact f0, some initial value, times exponential function e to the power of beta times t. Okay, now we just have to check whether this educated guess was correct. So um, we take the derivative of f df by dt, and that's equal to f0 times the inner derivative, that's beta, times the outer derivative, that's e to the power of beta times t. So, and the beta times uh, the, the f0 times this thing here, that can be um, summed up to function f itself. So f prime is equal to beta times f. So we can multiply with, with dt. So df is equal to beta times f times dt. And that's exactly our differential equation. So in a sense, we've solved this differential equation and solving a differential equation means from an equation that just contains the, um, the increments going to an entire function that we see right away what the function looks like. Okay, now well, let's check whether this is actually true also in a numerical simulation using Excel. So here's the Excel simulation. We've set beta equal to 0.1%. Uh, that's a pretty small number. But um, on the other hand, we take the dt equal to 1. Um, that will make the parallel to the um, stochastic differential equation a little bit simpler later on. So, uh, so therefore, um, we take this beta pretty small. Okay, and now we start with an initial value f of t and we just set it equal to 1. Now, the next step, uh, we calculate the increment df of t is then equal to the initial value times the time increment times the beta factor. Okay, and that's already it. So this is our increment. So the next value of f of t is going to be the initial value plus 
the increment. Okay, and now we do the same thing just for 1000 steps. And what do we get in the end? Well, it's not so surprising. We're pretty close uh, to here, to uh, the Euler's number itself, to the number E, 2.718. And the tiny difference, that's just uh, due to, well, if we take smaller increments, smaller DTs, then we'll get closer to the uh, true number of E. Okay, now if we solve the numerical, uh, the differential equation right away, we already know it's uh, e to the power of beta t. Let's calculate this uh, exponential function of beta times t. Okay, and let's see what we get if we do that. In the end, we get pretty much the same result, 2.718. So using this solution, we don't have to calculate these 1000 increments, but we can calculate the function at 1000 right away. That's what we call a solution. So we now come to the simulation of a stochastic differential equation. This is maybe new to some of you, so let me be a little bit slower here. It just means that every time when we add something to the original function, this increment is not predetermined, but it's stochastic. So here in this um, column here, where we say dw, dwt, we just draw an, a um, normal standard normal distribution. So uh, so you see here this uh, minus 0 0.67 is the first draw, minus 0 0.69 is the second draw. So this is uh, has the variance of one or the volatility of one and the mean of zero. Okay. Uh, whenever we uh, we press here uh, some, um, some key, then uh, we always get a new draw. And this is going to be uh, nice. Um, because then we can always see how different realizations are. If we just add up these normal distributions, uh, what we get is pretty much a Wiener process. So uh, that's what you see here. It starts at zero and then, um, well, you just have the uh, first increment is 0.91, second increment 1.91, and you just keep adding up, adding up, and then you get something that's called a Wiener process. All right. So this is kind of the, the Wiener process is kind of the atom or these tiny increments, uh, normally distributed increments that are the atoms of our um, stochastic processes. Okay. Now, uh, and if, if you plot the Wiener, Wiener process, it looks something wiggles up and down, but the only difference uh, between this is that it's an arithmetic Brownian motion so that means it can also become negative and the increments are as big as the decrements and things like that. OK, now we um, instead of taking uh, these increments, the normally distributed increments. Now we take increments that are equal to this normal distribution times the current well, let's let's write it like this. So we start with the current price, start, uh, the current um, value, and then we increment by normal distribution times some um, kind of volatility uh, factor sigma that I have here in uh, J1. You will see it later on. I've just um, pulled it out of the visibility for right now. Uh, and then we multiply with uh, DT also. OK, so this is it. Uh, so that would be our new value. And we do that a thousand times. Same thing, and we get something that wiggles up and down. And now I guess that you probably want to see it. This what we call ST. Um, now you see it's a little bit like a differential, it's a little bit like the numerical solution of a differential to a differential equation because 
you start with an initial value and then you always have increments and you just add them on and in the end you get something that looks very much like the solution to the ordinary differential equation that we just saw um, a couple of minutes ago. So let's have a look at what this uh, solution looks like. Here, yeah, this is what the solution looks like. It looks very much like um, a share price wiggling up and down. I've just made a, um, a, a typo or a mistake when I explained my X equation. So what we have to do is here, we start with the initial value, which is in E2. And then we add up this C3, so that's the normal distribution, times the volatility and times the current state of the function that's also in E2. So instead I wrote I wrote A3 there or A2 or something like that, so that was wrong, it has to be E2. Okay, and if we do that um, a thousand times, then we get these realizations here, of which looks pretty much like a share price, wiggling up and down, okay? And now what we want to do is we want to we want to know what's the relationship between this atom of the, um, the stochastic differential equation. So this Wiener process was the relationship between W and S. And if we can write S as a function of W, that means that we don't have to go over the increments anymore, but if we know the W, if we know the Wiener process, then we can calculate the function at the end right away. Okay, right. So this is what we call the solution that we um, that we don't have to go over the increments. It's very um, similar, uh, very parallel to what we've already seen when we talked about the normal ordinary differential equations. So let's again make an educated guess. Um, the solution to the ordinary differential equations where equation was e to the power of some factor times time. Maybe now, because the increments are um, now the normal distribution, maybe the solution is e to the power of this sigma times Wiener process. Could be, let's just check. So we write it here, exponential function times uh so where is my sigma that's here uh and multiply that with the wiener process itself or the realization of the wiener process rather and now we do that of course a thousand times and um now we compare the two i'm let's just look at the picture now the gray thing is this share price that we simulated the yellow thing that's new, that's the e to the power of the sigma times the Wiener process. And we see they look pretty much the same, but towards the end, there's a tiny difference. And the question is, is that something that's systematic? It looks a little bit larger um, than just a rounding error or something like that. Let's see for a couple of realizations of this Wiener process, whether how it looks for different realizations. Well, again, at the beginning, the two are the same and then they diverge a little bit, tiny little bit here. Again, they diverge a tiny little bit. The difference seems to be more or less the same all the times. So there seems to be some kind of regularity for every um, realization of the Wiener process that we draw here. Okay, different examples, always the same effect, looks like. So um, the question is, what is this difference? And as I already said, it has something to do with the compound interest effect that's due to the wiggling up and down or the, what's called the volatility of this Wiener process itself. So now finally, we come to the correct solution of this stochastic differential equation. So what we, the thing that we have constructed with these, by adding up these increments, and that is here e to the power of sigma times the Wiener process. That part was correct. I mean, that's not surprising because um, we, we had already the feeling that we were pretty close, but then there is a corrective term and that's minus t times sigma square. It's the variance over two. Right. If we calculate this equation, that's what I've done here. See here, exponential to the 
sigma times the Wiener process minus time times sigma to the square over two. If I do that a thousand times, I get um, this here. And um, now let's let's plot it. Let's see what it looks like. Um, if we have the the, uh, the the real process, that's the gray one, the one that we um, calculated making mistake, the exponential process, that was the yellow one. Now, if this thing here is correct, I mean, we already see that it's going to be a little bit smaller. If it's correct, then it should be below the yellow one. It may, maybe it's even identical to the gray one. Let's check. Here it is. In fact, you can't even see the gray one anymore because the blue one is exactly over it. So this means that this thing here, this animal e to the sigma times w minus t sigma square over 2, that's the solution to our stochastic differential equation. And now comes the last part. This is now where um, e to in fact kicks in. Now we want to check. Now we want to know why is this the solution. So the th same thing that we've already done with the ordinary differential equation. We took the derivative and saw, well, does it really fit our differential equation? That's what we have to do now. So that's theory. So we're going back to our paper slides back from Excel. So here we go. Uh, we start with our differential equation. That's this thing here. And we say, OK, the increment of our random walk of our process is equal to some factor sigma times the variable right now, st, times now not dt, not the delta t, but the increment in the Wiener process, which was normally distributed. So we always add up normal distributions, but we multiply them with sigma times st. And the initial value, like in our simulation, was equal to 1. OK. And here is now our educated guess for a solution, which we already saw in our numerical situation uh, simulation that it was correct. It We have guessed that st is equal to some initial value, s0, times e to the power of sigma times the Wiener process minus sigma square times t over 2. And now we want to check, is this right? And um, doing so, we have to use, we have to take a derivative. And now taking a derivative, if it involves a stochastic process, that is now where Ito's um, equation, Ito's lemma kicks in. Um, and this green thing here, that's actually Ito's lemma. It is very much related to um, just uh, differentiation by parts. Um, so the chain rule of differentiation, because it says that the increment in S is equal to, if we have a function h of w and t, uh, so this function depends on two variables. Then the increment in S is equal to partial derivative of this function with respect to W times the increment in W plus partial, different, uh, partial derivative of this function H to time times increment in time plus, and now this is really the last part here. This is really what's new about Ito plus one half times the second derivative of the function with respect to w times dt. Actually, sometimes you read dw to the square, and one can prove that dw to the square is equal to dt, but that's kind of out of reach for here right now, so we just write dt, OK? Now, this is um, a version of Ito's lemma. And now let's see what it means right here. You don't have to memorize it, of course. I think it's only interesting to see that the first part of Ito's lemma is identical to the chain rule uh, as you know it. And then there's an additional part, and that takes into account this wiggling and the comp compound interest effect, so to say, um, due to the wiggle. All right, let's see. Now, what's the partial differential of our function h, of our potential solution with respect to w? Well, let's look at the uh, at the function. Here it is. Um, the derivative with respect to w is just sigma times the function itself. So that's what we write here. Sigma times the function itself. 
times T dw times the increment in w. Okay. Second part. Now we have the um, partial derivative of our function with respect to t, which is, as you see here, minus sigma to the square over 2 times outer derivative, that's the s of t itself, times dt. Okay, so that's our second part that you probably would have guessed already. And now our third part, that's the new part, the innovation by Ito, 1 half times the second derivative of this solution function h, what we guess the solution is of h, and that is first derivative is sigma times the function, second derivative sigma squared times the function. So that's what we have here, sigma squared times the function times dt. And now you see that this part and this part, they exactly cancel out, and therefore we are left with the, um, in the end, with the um, ds increment in s is equal to sigma times s times the increment in the Wiener process. And that's exactly our orange thing. That's exactly what we wanted to prove. So let's just recapitulate. When we talked about an ordinary differential equation, we had the differential equation, we made an educated guess, we took the derivative of, um, of our educated guess, and then we saw, okay, the differential equation pops out again, so it must be a solution. Same thing we're doing here. We have our, in this case, stochastic differential equation that does not just contain the increment in time, but increment in the Wiener process, so that means a stochastic increment. Now we had an, made an educated guess for the solution. Um, we already knew now from our um, Excel uh, simulation that it would be correct. It's probably going to be correct. Of course, Excel is not a proof, and this is now here giving you the proof. Okay, we have this educated guess here in pink, and now we have to take the derivative. And to take the derivative, we have to use some version of uh, the chain rule, and that's Ito. And Ito, as I said, is taking into account the volatility and that's what we see here. Uh, first part is clear, second part is clear, the third part is new, um, the second and the third part cancel out, and we get back our initial um, partial uh, uh, um, differential equation, stochastic differential equation. So we have shown this is the solution. Right, now that's it. Let me recapitulate. Recapitulate. Uh, let me sum up. <laughs> let me sum up. So I hope that you agree that um, even though it looks a little bit abstract, um, applying ETO is not that complicated. Um, and it can be used to use a, a stochastic differential equation. I guess that for many of you, um, also stochastic differential equations are new. They're used a lot in finance. I guess you can guess why, um, because you've already seen this um, realization of this Wiener process, which looked very much like a like a share price evolution. So that's why we use a lot of um, stochastic processes in finance, continuous time stochastic processes. Right. Um, and the only difference between um, a stochastic differential equation and an ordinary differential equation is that for an ordinary differential equation, the increments that you always have at each, po each point in time just depend on the function itself and potentially on time. Okay. And for a stochastic differential equation, um, these increments can also depend on time. Here, I have taken something that's time independent. It can depend on the function. That's the case here because it depends on S. And it depends on some stochastic part. In our case, that's a Wiener process that's normally distributed. And then pops in Ito's lemma that tells us what the derivative of this thing is. We use it, we calculate it, and what comes out is just our initial um, differential equation. So that means that we've proven that we have the correct solution. So what is the solution? Just um, to make sure we're on the same side, s of t is equal to this. That is our solution of the differential equation. Why is it a solution? Because it's because we don't have, it doesn't contain the increments any, anymore, but if we know the Wiener process, we can calculate the solution right away. So it's the same thing as sol uh, solving and just ordinary 
differential equation. Okay, well, I have to say, uh, just as a final word, um, I always found um, Ito a little bit frightening myself. Um, but now, especially after I've done this educational video here, um, it's become a little bit better. And um, I hope you also liked it. If you did, share it with your friends. I mean, only those that are interested in uh, stochastic, stochastic calculus, of course, not everyone, but those that are interested. Um, well, I would be happy if I get a couple of clicks and also if I get comments under the video. Okay, goodbye and hope to see you sometime.